Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, today we're out at the shooting range and we're going to take a muzzle-loading shotgun and show you how to use it. Now, recently Dave Canterbury did a very good video series on using the modern shotgun, an H&R with a chamber insert. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But this will be about a true muzzle-loading shotgun. This is a Thompson Center New Englander in 12 gauge. Just happens to be a real spiffy camouflage okay the board diameter is 12 gauge on this and so we're going to take it and shoot it we're going to talk about what is a mid, uh, low load a medium lo uh, excuse me a light load a medium load and a heavy load and the various components and ways of loading it but for right now we're going to start out with a light load and we're going to talk about it and how to load a muzzle loading shotgun First, let's do a little background so we understand about the shotgun, even though it's a muzzle loader. Okay, so let's explain real briefly shotgun and then how this applies directly to muzzle loading shotgun. First, let's ascertain that a 12 gauge muzzle loader is exactly the same as a 12 gauge modern gun as far as the size of it. Next, that when you look, understand shots and loads, that there are three basic power levels you need to be aware of. That is a light load, a medium load, and a heavy load. Okay? It's just a power level and how much shot we're putting at a target. I want you to remember this word, these three words. Game, load, range. Okay? Game, load, range. Game equals what are we hunting? The shot for a squirrel, a rabbit is roughly the same. The shot for a duck or a goose or a moose is different. Okay? Consequently, a shot for something small and very delicate, like a, like a quail, is again a different shot. So, what am I hunting? What's the game? Second question, the load. And that depends on what I'm, how far away, okay? Because these two go together, load and range. So, for example, a squirrel load that I'm expecting to be short range would be a number six. The load would be a light load and the range would be 15 to 25 yards. Okay, so it would be game, squirrel, load, a number six, a light load and that because it's going to be fairly close up I need the pellets to be sufficiently large enough and have enough mass to do what they're doing, but not so much that it's just a solid wall of shot coming at them like a heavy load, which is going to just fill the animal full of shot, and I'm not going to be able to eat it because it's five pounds of lead in it, you know what I mean? There's a, a balance point here. Also you need to understand that modern shotguns are meant to duplicate black powder instead of, well, the black powder is weaker. No, they're the same power. Smokeless is made to balance to be equal to black. So a 12 gauge black powder, it can do the same thing as a cartridge smokeless black powder with proper load. Now, of course, you're gonna be a little faster here, a little lower than you're going to, oh, they're faster in the modern. Not necessarily. Speed is your enemy in many ways. So let me explain that right quick. Why is speed your enemy? It's because when you generate a load and you look on the end of a box, let's say for your regular 12 gauge, you've got a favorite load, okay? And on the end of the box, it's gonna give you information. It's gonna tell you it's 12 gauge. It's gonna tell you whether this is a two and three quarter, a three or a three and a half inch shell and it's going to tell you the rough speed. Usually this is going to be represented in something called drams. Okay? Dram. 
is an old archaic measurement that comes from when these guns were coming up in the 1500s. And it was a, a volume unit of measurement, like think shot glass. A shot of whiskey, well, that's a given volume. It's so many ounces. But before there was ounces and before that there were drams. And a dram is roughly 27 and a half grains. 27 and a half is hard to add, <laughs> you know. So what do I do? I just always round it up. So I just say 30 grains. So when you look on the end of this of a box and it says two and a half dram. 30 plus 30 plus 15. Two and one half equals 75 grains. So that would be a light load, would be a two and a half dram. Most of your shooting is going to be at the two and three quarter and the three dram. So somewhere between 75 and 90 grains. Okay? And then a heavy load is four drams, 120 grains. That's a very heavy load. That's a kicker boy. But what would you be using that for? The only time I'd use such a heavy load is usually with bird shot, and I'm trying to take things like geese, duck, turkey, because those big heavy pelts of feathers not only are light and airy and keep them warm, they also act like body armor. And it's amazing how much they can absorb from impacts of bullet of pellets and not kill the bird. So you gotta have an overwhelming hit to guarantee that enough's gonna get through to do the job because we're talking a big bird. And so usually heavy loads that are of shot are going to be bird loads, big heavy bird loads. Buck shot will be actually a medium load usually. And slug, or in this case round ball, will be a medium load because of that, because we're doing a payload. Let me explain that. When you look on your box, it's going to say da da da, and it's going to say like seven eighths, one ounce, one and an eighth, one and a quarter, one and a half. Of shot how many ounces of shot that's the important part so seven eights would usually have a two and a half dram to launch it because that's a that's a light load why would you want such a light load because I'm going to be shooting a quail or something very close. It's only going to be 10 or 12 yards away when I pull the trigger, so i got to throw a big pattern of small pellets, but not be that powerful, because i just got to knock him down with one or two pellets. I don't want to go poof, and there's a ball of feathers. See? So the idea of the game is light finesse, right? So a light load, light charge. And these kind of balance out. Now, you notice right there it says one and an eighth. So let's look at that a minute. It is one and one eighth. And we're going to say, I believe this is about a three, well, that was a weird three, a three and a quarter dram. Now, one and an eighth of what? Here's where you got to understand the concept of the payload. It don't matter. So this is one and an eighth of number eight, or one and an eighth of number fours, or one and an eighth of uh, double alt buckshot, let's say, alt, alt, buck, or one and an eighth of number sixes. It don't matter what the size is as long as it weighs that. It's like a balance scale. This much weight, this much powder to throw it at proper speed and penetration and not blow the pattern. We'll get to that in a second. So it says one and an eighth. 
So the pattern charge you'd use for one and an eighth, you could use for number sixes, number fours, number eights, number twos, anything that's one and an eighth. How about, remember that seven eighths up there? How about a seven eighths ounce slug? Well, that's the powder charge for it. Slug being solid is a little different from blowed pattern. So let me explain blowed pattern. You're going to load that, sh that barrel or that shot shell, even if it's a modern shot shell. If your power is too much for the amount of shot, what happens is when it gets to the end of that barrel and it starts to open up, it's kind of like a parachute coming out, imagine, where that shot comes out and spreads out. If you're a little powder heavy, and I'm trying to get some velocity out of this, the wad that held it may punch through the middle of it because it's got a lot of velocity left. And you end up with a donut where there's no pellets in the middle and it's a ring of donuts. And you're aiming here and guess what's in the middle? The bird you're aiming at. And it's because it's called a blowed pattern. There's a hole in it because too much kick, not enough lead, okay? It's a balancing act if we want to get there and let go at the proper time and it get to the target. I'll explain this more a little bit later. But for right now, you just got to understand that concept that it's a balance. This heavy for this much shot. This much powder for this much shot. Okay. Now, in the old days, remember Dram, we did it by volume. And this is going to be weird for you guys that load modern rifle and handgun ammunition. It was by a volume, this much to this much. And that's where one of these little devices comes in. Now, there's many ways you can measure this stuff, but for the sake of this argument, we're gonna talk about this. This closed all the way is a 7 8 ounce of shot, and it says so right there on it. And then you open it up to the first click. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. I'm on now. There it is. First click, and that's one ounce of shot. And the next click is one and an eighth. Then click one and a quarter. And then finally one and a half. Remember that number of one and an eighth? So I take this measure, and that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to measure powder with it first. This is an equal one. This is where you start, okay? You're going to say, I want to, Blackie, I want to duplicate this. This is my favorite hunting load for squirrel, rabbit, dove, whatever. I want to duplicate this. Read it right off the box. You know, it's a one and an eighth ounce of number seven and a half, and it's going about that fast. Well, that's about this dram, da 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 da. And you get you one of these little scoops, and you set it for one and an eighth, and you use powder. Now, what kind of powder do you use? It has been my experience with muzzle-loading shotguns, you want 2F as opposed to 3F. We use 3F in pistols and small caliber rifles. But especially remember that blowed pattern? 2F is more of a, we will say, gentle shove than that pop the clutch, we're gone of 3F. And you have less blown patterns that way. I want a pattern landing on my target of even pellet distribution, not a big donut. And so 2F is what you want to use for shotguns. In Pyrodex, it's RS, okay? Yes, you can do it with 3F, but you may have to back the powder charge down slightly. And that's just gonna be shooting and finding out and tweaking, okay? So you're gonna start with one and an eighth, let's say. What, what kind? Whatever you can pour in that cup. One and an eighth of buckshot. One and an eighth of fine bird shot. One and an eighth of number five. Again, game. What am I going after? I'm going after bunnies. So fours, fives, or sixes. Whatever you've got for that. How heavy? A one and an eighth. Okay, there's a the powder charge. You dip that, pour that, and then you follow this up with the shot. Okay. A lot of guys like to carry, to reload in the field, a shot pouch like this. And in here is bird shot. Actually, I think this is number seven and a half. 
in here and it's got a thing where it hangs downhill like that. I never trusted that to be honest. But I just carry it in a pouch and I'll hang it like a powder horn on my side. And that way I can pop open this neck and pour it into that little measure. And that's how I measure out the shot. So you're going to pour the gunpowder in first, the black powder 2F in first. Now you need a divider between the powder and the shot. And there's some sort of card. Now the classic way to do it is nitro cards. This is exactly how they loaded shotgun shells. Um, and there were paper holes and you can still get these for doing it. And there's basically three different sizes. This is called the nitro wad. And it's a little bit thicker than a nickel. This is the wad that goes down there between the powder and the shot. And what it does on top of the powder, and what it does is it kind of seals up the bore and gives it a nice even something to push against. It's thicker so that it doesn't roll the edge and it don't blow into the shot. Okay. Then on top of that, you're supposed to put a cushion wad. And these are cushion wads. Now it's just, these have been made out of cork, all kinds of stuff. And it's just a thick, super light, it's like you're holding styrofoam, they're so light, wad that acts as a cushion, a shock absorber, so that when that hit, bam, hits it from the powder taking off, the shot doesn't kind of deform and mash up. It kind of slides it instead of just shoving it so much. And it makes, a, again, a better pattern. So we've got a nitro card over the powder. Then we put a cushion one. Then we pour our shot in. And finally we come back with an over the, pa the shot card, which is a very thin little card like that. And that's what seals it up. That's what holds it all together, just like a modern shotgun shell, inside the barrel. So when you tip the barrel down, the shot don't roll out and it keeps everything compressed and nice and tight. That's the idea. And it does work. And with the heavy loads, I use these heavy cards. And you will see that when I go to shooting the solid pumpkin ball, which is like the slug, and for heavy buckshot loads. You'll want this. It's really necessary then. But it's not necessarily for the small game loads and the light loads and even most of the medium loads. I do that a different way, and I'll show you that when we go to the range in just a minute. But the, uh, the whole thing you need to understand is no matter what the load is, you're just going to start out with an equal volume of powder for that much shot. And one of those little shot cups, Track of the Wolf sells them. You can find them on eBay. Lee Precision sells them. And what you're looking for is a uh, shot measure, shot dipper, Lee Precision Shot Dipper. They still sell them. They're like seven bucks. Now, modern days are plastic. Mine came out of an old kit, so it's aluminum and metal. But they still make them. They're out of plastic. And you're going to measure the shot and carry it there. And then once you get to the field, you would make sure that the, the chamber is clear. You would pour the pre-measured the measured powder charge down with that dipper. You'd put the over powder card down, ram it down, good and firm. If you're using a heavier load, then you'd put in the big wads, and these should be wet. You should take these and soak them the night before, and just squeeze them out so there's not a, this should be damp, and this kind of wipes and cleans the bore. And if you're going to be doing a lot of bird shooting or something, where it's going to be a lot of skeet shooting or whatever, it's definitely the way to go because it kind of wipes the bore and keeps fouling from building up. Then you're going to pour down your shot. And then you're going to put the overshot card on top, ram that, cap it, and you're ready to go. Obviously, that's a lot of steps, ain't it? So now, let's go to the range that we've done this little overview. And let me show you how to kind of down and dirty, we can sidestep most of that. And let me show you how to do it. But first, let me show you how you make them. Okay, now that we've talked about that, now we're going to talk about the down and dirty way to get this in the field. And this is for light load. And light loads are usually what you can expect to use for 0 to 20 to 25 yards. Now, most of the time in my hunting, in my dense woods down here, that's the range that you're going to be encountering small game, rabbit, squirrel, quail, things like that. At. Because beyond that range, 
is big open territory and you really got to load for heavy but in my thick cover you're more likely to step up on a game animal like a squirrel or rabbit or whatever at zero, at zero to 15, 20 yards max as you are to having a 40 yard shot on something. And if I'm loaded heavy for 40 yard shots, like we talked about, load for what you expect to be shooting and at the range you expect to be shooting, I'm more likely to just pepper and pulverize a squirrel or small game at 15 to 20 yards if I've loaded for a 40 yard shooter. So dial it in for what you want. So let's show how to load this. Now, how I do it for mine, okay? We talked about building a load and everything else. Here's the down and dirty method. I go down to the craft store and get these little bitty glass bottles that have the screw top lids on them. And I will put a thick piece of cardboard between them so the two lids don't bind up against each other and so I can take off each lid individually. And then I wrapped it up with electrical tape. Then around the outside of that, I put masking tape so I can write on. So I know this is a one and a quarter load of number six shot. Okay? So, to begin with, and I'm going to set the camera and you can watch me go through the loading process. I'm going to pull out of my pouch some caps, and I'm going to pop one or two caps on it to make sure that the channel is open and clear. If any oils or whatever from me loading, cleaning, etc. before, so just pop it off. If you get that hollow thunk sound, it means that the zone is clear. And after you pop, blow through, I should see a little bit of smoke come out. Now, I will take my shot and powder load, and I will take out my next component. Okay, the next component out of my pack is a carry little tin and those pre-cut wads that we talked about. Okay, right here, let me point out how do you do those little cards. Well, I went to Harbor Freight and they sell a whole set of these hammer punches. This is a three quarter inch punch. I think the whole set was under $10. And that's where I get the ones to punch out wads for my 36 cabin ball and also for my 44s. Well, this is what I punch out 12 gauge and the other, I think the 5 eighths is what I use for 20 gauge, I believe. But I know definitely this is a three quarter. Now, the material is soda boxes. This is waxed thin enough cardboard. And as I showed, you just put multiple cards on top of each other and it does a great job. This is all I'm gonna be utilizing for a light or medium load is gonna be these wads and how I load them. So, I pop to clear the channel. Now I'm gonna take and screw so I'll leave the bottom open a little bit, I can tell which one's powder and which one's shot. And I'll pour the powder charge down the barrel. Put the lid back on. Now I'm going to put four of these little cards in there. Just put them in. One, two, three, four. Like that. Take my ramrod. Good tight seal. And I put them one on top of the other. Tap it till it's a good solid bump bump on the bottom. It's all the way down. Now, I unscrew the other one and I pour my one and a quarter ounces of shot, number sixes, in the hole. Screw that lid closed. And I put a single wad over the top this time for a total of five wads to load a medium or a light load. Tap it down good and firm. Take your ramrod back out, put it back in the thimbles. Close. Now we take a cap and I will usually carry a capper on my strap so that I can just bring it out and cap. Push the cap.
cap down, down, bring it back to half cock. Just like that. Okay, now let's go look at the target. You look down there on that berm, there's an, a whole clay pigeon to the right of that steel target. That's going to be my target. The range is going to be right at 15 to 20 or about 18 yards, something like that. All right, I peppered a little bit low of it, but I did hit it. There's hunks missing out of it. Okay, to the right of the car target board, there's a whole clay pigeon. That's my target. Okay, it's broke. Broken multiple pieces just laying there. Not pulverized, and that's not what I want. This is for small game like rabbits and squirrels up close. I only need three, four, five pellets to hit the animal. Now as far as patterning, like we talked about, that would be if I'm gonna go for birds. Then I need to really pattern this and work up a pattern load. But for a small game light load, this works just fine. As you can see, I was able to take that out. And let me reload and I'm gonna move up a little bit about 15 yards, about the closest I'd want to take a shot to show you what it's gonna do. Sorry what about the wind guys. Okay, I'm gonna move up to about 15 yards, show you what a realistic rabbit shot or something would be. Bunnies, rabbits, or stuff is usually going to see them at fairly close range. Rabbits and squirrels, you know, big swamp bunnies. Ra squirrels are normally about a 15, 20 yard shot because you got to be up in the tree a little bit. That's about it. Coons and stuff, same thing down here. So this light load works perfectly fine for that. Now all I need is pre-made up charges so I don't have to carry all that stuff with me to the field. I supply the cards, which my shooting bag, which I'll show you in a minute, it's got pockets for that, and then a thing of caps. And I would normally have a capper hanging up here from the strap. I could just cap right quick and let go, an inline capper. Very quick. So I'm going to reload. I want you to time me and see how long it takes. Remembering that if I had a capper, you could drop some seconds off of it for doing the cap. Here we go. Well, let's angle you up a little bit. There we go. All right, here you go. Powder. Four cards. One, two, three, four. Bam rod. Shot. One card. Done. Turn ramrod. Cap. Done. I'm going to put up another target right quick and we'll vaporize it. So, that's how to down and dirty run 
a muzzleloader shotgun in the field. Pre-measured powder, pre-measured shot that is appropriate for the range and the type of game you're expecting. Some cards that you make yourself which are basically free and caps. That's it. It can be a very, very economical way to take to the field and hunt. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. I've enjoyed making it for you, and there'll be more coming on this in the future because this was just the light load and the basic. In the next part two of this, I'll be shooting the big round ball and the equivalent of a slug that turns this into a 69 or 70 caliber musket, 12 gauge musket and show you what we'd use for big game like deer and etc. And we use them big cushion wads and things for that, building that type of shot column. That'll be in the next video. Okay guys, and that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you will do me a favor and hit that like button before you go and feed the algorithm, I'd really appreciate it. YouTube has changed the way they're doing videos and it cutting in his money. So I'd really appreciate it. Till next time guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.